Top of the morning, my fellow peasants. How are you all doing? Praise be to Yevon. All that good stuff. Uh, so needless to say, we haven't heard much about the Final Fantasy VII Remake in quite some time. Even though it has just recently been the 20 years. Uh, 20 years? 20th anniversary of this glorious, beautiful game. They really haven't said much, but something did emerge. Something confusing, bamboozling, has had me up and down, round and round. Confused as hell. Because what we know is that in 2015 we saw a trailer that looked pretty good but it was on Unreal Engine 4. And I, the moment I saw that I leaped for joy because I, I've liked Final Fantasy 15 and I've liked the way it looked but the engine, it caused problems. All the way through the development cycle, it most definitely did. Uh, we, we've had quotes from Tablet himself saying that we've had to work through you know, monumental tech issues. The Leviathan fight in Final Fantasy XV, they barely got it together and they had to rework it twice because it simply would not work um, when it came to adapting it to console and the game was pushed back two months because of tech issues. So when I found out this was going to be Unreal Engine 4 7 Remake, I was glad because I just really didn't want to see the same issues where we have a skimped, cut down version of FSM Remake and it just gave me hope that on UE4, a well fleshed out, commonly used engine, you know, is versatile even with Kingdom Hearts 3 that shifted from Luminous to Unreal and they've adapted it specifically to Kingdom Hearts. So I, it made me happy that we could see all of the regions, all of the towns, because uh, 7 Remake, god damn it's a big game guys. It's a big, big game. I mean, if you really think about it, they've got to go, we go under the sea, we go into space, there's about four or five mountains, we go to tundras, we go to deserts, um, and about 50 different locations. And there's things like summons. I think there's 13 different summons in FF7. And Luminous Engine could barely get together the Leviathan one. I mean, admittedly, the scale probably won't be as big. Um, so, so that's what I was happy about. But Yoshinori Katase has now thrown a huge spanner in the works that could either be perceived as bloody damn good news or ominous. Uh, and it has come from an interview on Creative Village. It hasn't really hit mainstream news yet. And he said the following. <clears throat> I would like the people of today's generation to taste the shock. That was tasted then. So Final Fantasy 7 Remake produced this time is not made by tracing FF7 20 years ago, but by generously introducing the latest technology, exceeding the latest FF series, Final Fantasy 15. I want to deliver a new shock. Well, Katase, deliver it you have. I dare say I've soiled my cuffs. Exceeding Final Fantasy XV? What? What? I mean, I I've looked at these two engines for the last year, so this is fantastic news. I mean, just on the face value before I start getting uh, worried about it, this is great. That means we're going to have a fantastic looking Final Fantasy VII remake. It's going to look incredible. Way different to what we saw in 2015. Um, but on the flip side, latest technology that exceeds 15 is that really capable on the PS4? I mean, is Unreal Engine 4 even capable of exceeding Final Fantasy 15? I know it's versatile, and mostly with these engines, there's always untapped potential. So you can never outright say which is better, but Unreal Engine 4 just, as we have seen it, does not exceed Final Fantasy 15. Neither in polygon density, neither in shaders. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just not technically as grand. It's not, it's not hitting as many milestones and benchmarks as what Luminous, but some people actually like that. Kingdom Hearts 3 recently went from Luminous to Unreal Engine, and a lot of people said they liked the shift. Although the character models definitely do look better, the hair strand details um, and some of the texturing is far better on Luminous. A lot of people say they don't like it, it gives like a grainy kind of matte, uh, almost too realistic look. And with something like Kingdom Hearts, which is a bright, vibrant, um, kind of ridiculous and out there game, a lot of people have said that they prefer Unreal Engine 4. It has the sort of the smoother texturing to it and it really makes the colours a bit more poppier. But on what planet is Unreal Engine 4 going to be exceeding? Luminous Engine, the engine that Square Enix have worked tirelessly to try to get into um, a really workable condition. So are we talking Unreal Engine 5? And uh, that, that raises even more questions. Um, with this coming in 2019, I have said from day one, I really don't see what Square Enix are going to do. They plan to make the Final Fantasy VII episodic and with them saying it's going to be comparable to the size of the 13 trilogy, it's safe to make a guess that there's going to be three episodes. Now this is going to be a trilogy, it doesn't seem possible or likely that we could get all episodes within um, the PS4's console lifespan. 
goddamn, I can barely speak. This is the problem with doing news first thing in the morning. So if it did come in 2019, the first episode, th this game would be getting released right in the middle right in the crossover stage between the PS4 and PS5. And that presents a whole range of questions. W what does that mean? Does that mean that the first episode is just going to be PS4 and then the other two are going to be PS5? Or uh, does it mean the whole thing is going to be PS4 and then they're just going to have it on PS4 still even when the PS5 is out and then just have it to the PS5 as well and it's going to look really dated? Um, a lot of people have kind of come to that conclusion that they think it will first come on PS4, then it will come on PS5, but they will still release it on PS4. Well, I kind of agreed with that logic, that they would just still bring it to the PS4, but how is it possible? If Final Fantasy VII Remake is now going to exceed Final Fantasy XV, the game that we have quotes from Square Enix saying they were maxing the console. According to them, they were maxing it. They were flogging that dead horse. They were pushing, according to them, the PS4 as far as it could possibly go. Now, a lot of people have come out since and said, oh, no game has ever truly untapped the PS4's potential. Um, I, I disagree with that. I think we have seen how far the PS4 can go. So I can't see, um, if anyone has any ideas or thoughts, I'm really open to hearing any advice. Guys, I don't want to come across as a know-it-all. Um, I've really looked at these two engines side by side, comparison videos, and in my opinion, I can't, I can't see myself how Unreal Engine 4 could exceed Final Fantasy 15. Maybe are they shifting to a totally different engine at all? I'm highly doubtful. But to hear this news mixed in along with Everything we've seen with Final Fantasy VII Remake recently, which is a huge Cyber Connect fallout, a massive internal shift, all to now internal and having to recruit about 200 new staff members. And by their own admission, they have to train those people. And how the development cycle has been sort of halted and pushed back slightly. And with Katase, uh, Katase Nomura, <laughs> Nomura, the director of the game, off doing Kingdom Hearts 3. Final Fantasy VII Remake is in a very dodgy position. So on the face value, I wanted to read this, that FSM Remake will exceed 15, and hoop and holler for joy. But it really makes me think that with this recent CyberConnect fallout, and knowing that their development cycle has been delayed, Square Enix have done this in the past. I mean, they did it with Final Fantasy XV, they did it with 12, and they've done it with 9 and 7 and 6. And I've done these videos before nine times that Final Fantasy games skip to console generation. And the reason why this has always happened is happened nine times out of 15 main installments. If they ever hit a speed bump in the development cycle and they realise it's going to be out a year or two later, they always do it. They always get concerned that the game's going to look outdated by that point, And fairly it will. Because they always want Final Fantasy to look like the next hot shit and they don't want it to look even a year or two outdated. They want it to be a forerunner. So if the development cycle cycle has been pushed back, I can really imagine that Katase uh, and the entire Square Enix team, they've gone back to the drawing board and they've started discussing what they want the 7 remake to be and how they want it to look uh, and what technology is going to produce this game and could they have now changed their mind and gone, you know what, let's try to exceed Final Fantasy XV. I mean, that's what he says. I want to deliver a new shock. Now, he hasn't just said that in technology. He has said that with the story, that it's not going to look exactly like the original. That even us hardcore nostalgia fans, he wants to shock and surprise us. us. Surprises us? Surprises us as us. Throw curveballs that not even we're expecting. And it looks like they don't want to just do it story-wise. They now want to do it technology-wise. I don't know what to think. And with Tabata over in Division 2 saying that they're now working on a big project that they want to make twice the size of Final Fantasy XV, it just seems like across the board, across the divisions, Square Enix's head is so far up the arse of technology, they can't stop aspiring to ever loftier heights of technical prowess that, again, we saw what happened with XV, we saw how it threw certain scenes, um, certain elements of the game under the bus, how it delayed it, and now we have Seven Remake trying to exceed that. It's scary times guys, it's exciting times. We may have a 7 remake that looks absolutely uh, incredible and I could be eating my own words and they could really pull this off and this could be the best remake of all time. Or we could end up seeing this in 2024 uh, after monumental cuts with frame rate issues, bugs, glitches and god knows what else. Uh, I'll leave a link to the article, it was Creative Village, most of it hasn't even been translated so if anyone knows how to speak Japanese. But there it is guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. How do you feel, what do you think is going down at the um, Square Enix headquarters and uh, this really makes sense because Nomura said we wouldn't be hearing about the 7 remake for a while. And in Nomura's terms, considering soon means 6 months, 
A while must mean at least a year plus, so I really think that Seven Remake has just slid back. Slid back in development, Square Enix have massively changed up what their aspirations technically are for this game, and even another part of this article, uh, Katasa even kind of admits it, he says they are still, quote, brushing up on the scenes we saw in the trailer. But I don't care. I don't care. I have waited 10 years for this game. I have petitioned. I have begged. I have pleaded. I have argued with trolls who never said it would happen online. I can wait. I can wait. Because patience is a virtue and good things come to those who wait. Apparently. <laughs> Just don't mess it up. <laughs> Until the next video. <sighs> Kubo! <laughs>